Welcome back guys. Today we have something a bit different. It's the wet dream of every radical feminist out there. It's the power, episode one. So then guys, after that wonderful intro there, I actually have read the book for this. So What? Ben. What? what are you what are you feeling so far? I've maybe? not read the book, just to put that out there. Yeah, ben so. can't read the uh... <laughs> I can read, but we're just uh, I'm just purely watching on from a TV point of view. But to be fair, Steve, the, the overview of the episode for me is you know, I, I like the different mix of characters and, uh, you know, I think it's a bit of a slow build to begin with, uh, but I don't know. And then I've got some questionable powers, Steve, man. Yeah, uh, so... I the logistics around this. Yeah, so I think so far it is a slow build, like we've said. I, yeah. think, I think that's probably why they dropped three episodes, to get you going into it. Yeah. But episode one, you know, you've come in to watch one episode. I think it's quite slow, but the premise is good. So obviously the idea that you can almost see from the start of it that the world order is about to, to switch around yeah, from yeah. Like, like men having the power to women having the power, as it is, you know, I said, wet dream of every feminist. Classic eye, But um, I think the thing I love the most about the book and the TV series, mm. character switching. I like that. Because I think, I think back to like Game of Thrones where you flick around or yeah. you mentioned the early one as well, didn't it you? It reminds me of Heroes. Now, for anyone out there's watching and, and, and knows Heroes, you'll know what I mean. But for me, it feels like they're switching couch. And I've even kind of put a few different names together like oh. I think that the Joss lady I believe it is, yeah. I feel like she's our Peter Petrelli right she, she's gonna stay slow and steady and then she's slowly gonna get right to the top oh, you've okay, got uh, you've got Roxy the, the Anglo British he's, she's our uh, our Siler our killer our the Siler oh, okay, then, okay. and then you've even got people like Ali at the start so who, who would so who's good. our hero our hero okay yeah, then. Yeah. Oh. I know she's got the power but it takes a little bit longer for it to actually get that oh, power. Okay, then okay. So you mentioned um, questionable powers on the overview. Yeah. What what makes you say that? What's what's like, the? I know there's a little bit where it, you know it's all based from emotion, isn't it? From what I'm getting the gist of. And there's moments where they they touch the, some people's faces and the, and then they kill them. Yeah. From, from the electric coming out of their hands. But then there's a, there's a bit with with Trunde, the guy who cheekily electrocutes his bum a little bit, and and he's like, oh, hang on. So I'm thinking, if, if I was a woman and and I had these powers, you know, or the power. Uh, would I how do I differentiate between like uh, you know passion and anger you know in, in terms so of I think obviously you've got to remember these are all meant to be young girls who are getting the power yeah and they've just developed it it's like think like X-Men you know when an X-Men gets the power straight away they don't know how to control oh, it okay, so they okay. have to so, they yeah. have to learn to control it that's, and that's where we're going with there but obviously you saw that as well towards the end there's a mention of eels so Ali walks into an eel yeah, place yeah, yeah. and there's a key phrase here and they say uh, eels can electrocute their prey and make them swim towards their mouth so keep a keep a thing keep you know keep your brain on that one because that okay. might pop up again at some point so obviously using using the electric mm. to almost impulse people controlling people mind control in a way <laughs> yeah so uh, so yeah would you just uh, thinking would you carry on with the episodes what do you think do you know what? I think I am going to give it a shot because uh, it's not like sometimes you watch an episode and you think oh no it's boring you know I'm never watching that again. Uh, no comment for extrapolations out there. Uh, <laughs> but I think this one I've watched and there's enough in it. And I think it is purely because it's switching characters and switching stories. There's enough there to keep me going, okay, let me watch episodes two and three. And I think that's why they've put them on all together. Yeah. Because they probably know that as well. Well, well I think we're, we're actually missing one of the characters having been shown in episode one. So we'll oh, see okay, her nice. in episode two. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think that character switching makes a difference. Yeah. One of the things I do want to ask you about, well, what do you think about the voice then? The voice is intriguing. So, yeah. what, 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 who do you think it she, is? She sounds like the, the, the main woman to me, the woman who we saw at the start, the older lady, and the one who we saw at the end, the one who's obviously got all the power. What was her name? Margot. Margot. Yeah, it's, Margot. Mate, they're, they're, saying nothing, they're saying nothing alike. They're, oh, to me, they sound Their accents similar. are completely different. They sound similar to me. So, what, what, what do you think the voice is then? Who do you think the voice what, what do you think? Because the, the voice is talking directly to Ali, right? You hear I reckon the voice, we're hitting like almost like a... Yeah, Called the midwife type thing where it's just narrating what's already happened. So it's not a narration because you hear her talk to the voice and it talks back to her. So what do you think it is? I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to drag it out a little bit. It's an hour, isn't it? So, you, so you, 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 you heard the narration at the her start. Conscience, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, maybe. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe. But um, but uh, what did you think about the uh, the whole abuse thing? Then obviously in this. You can see the uh, yeah. Obviously, no one likes to see uh, anyone get abused out there and stuff, and you know, it's a sad scene to see. And, that that uh, scene was was painful. It, it, yeah. it, it's just horrible. For, isn't it? for like, me, it highlights one of the details I noticed about that scene is the wife who turns up the radio. She she knows 
that's happening. She knows the abuse is happening. She's almost a a, a contributor to an accomplice to it. A, an accomplice yeah. to the abuse because she's not saying anything. She's not speaking up. She's just turning up the music and ignoring the fact. Yeah, For me, no. I, I didn't mind that. I thought no, no, it was it was, it was horrible, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, then so normally in this segment we do hidden details we love. But this week, we're going to actually throw a little bit of the book things in that, yeah. that I think are different, that I think would, that I'm not too sure about. So firstly, <coughs> Tunde's character. Okay. Now, in the book, he's a young 21-year-old, but he's like, he's trying to get this girl. So like it's the same sort of setup. He's trying mm-hmm. to get the girl, but they're playing coy, you know. He's set up, yeah. he's, he's pretending to be sick so he can well, stay at home right. while she's there well, playing coy. Right. But when he kisses her, mm-hmm. he gets electrocuted. And in this, he kind of like just brushes it off like, oh, what was that? And walks off. In the book, he's he's almost terrified. He's mm, he's in between way. he's in between scared and happy. It's like this weird thing where he's not quite yeah. sure what's going on. I feel like in the TV series, his character almost comes off a bit a bit cocky. Yeah. yeah Whereas I think is. in the book, he he doesn't come off that cocky. He's, he's almost mm. more reserved because he's meant to be one of the only male characters we actually like for it. Yeah, yeah. And I think the one thing that annoyed me with this is that when he finds out when he, when when his friends attacked by the lightning powers, yeah, that doesn't happen in the book. In the book, he just stumbles on. He just happens to be recording someone in a supermarket who's getting harassed. So some young girl's getting harassed by an older man. Okay. And then she just attacks the older man. But it, it almost like plays in this like Tunde's try, tried to steal his friend's with the, with the story. Party. Yeah, and I think that I think that's that's bad because Tunde's not supposed to be like that. Tunde's supposed to be almost the voice of truth as we go through this. And I think that I think that did him dirty a little bit. And I wasn't I was a bit unhappy about that. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. Yeah, about Tunde then, I suppose. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Tunde's character. I'm hoping Tunde's character gets better. I mean, the biggest thing for me though yeah, that was on. missed from the book is at the very start of the book. There's actually it starts off, um, spoilers a little bit, where basically there's a man who's writing to a woman and he's written a story and it's this story, and the woman's the editor and she's like, oh my god, she's like, I can't wait to read more chapters of this. Imagine a world run by men. Well, wow, wouldn't that be like a much much kinder, much sexier world? So you can already see. <laughs> The yes, whole of this would. story <laughs> is the world's already been flipped upside down. Yeah. And we're, we're finding out how that happened. And as we go through the book, the book actually counts down to a certain oh, event. Okay. And that's missing from here. And there's a few biblical quotes for that tossed about. I know you like a line, you like a Bible I quote. I do, I do love a Bible And quotes. I think that's missing from this. Because it almost, I assume the TV series, they don't want to show you what's going to happen. Yeah. Whereas in the book, you get these little snippets and you almost, you get little uh, museum extracts of items they found. Ah, okay. And I think that'd be really interesting if they'd done that in the TV series. But yeah. Well, hopefully then, you know, I, I don't know, but they might bring in some of these little hidden Easter egg type things, you know, moving forward. I'm hoping so. We might be. And then yeah. finally, the voice is a much longer thing for for Ali. The voice has been there for most of her life, not okay. just spurred up at the last minute there. It's been so with it's her very not long. Not derived, not de- derived from the power itself. It's more. Yeah, well, in the in the, the in the TV series, she almost doesn't trust the voice. She keeps asking it, yeah. "Oh, who are you? Do I trust you?" In the TV series, she trusts the voice. There's none of this questioning. In, in the book, sorry, she doesn't question it as much. Yeah, just thought that. Mm, anyway, Ben, you know, following yeah, those little book changes, like I said, like a few little things I was a bit unhappy with. What was your best scene? Best scene? I have so episode one. Uh, oh, do you know what? For me, it's got to be the scene where we've got Roxy's dad walking up to the cake and he's like, what's this? It's like, it's, it's the cake you asked for. And he's like, no, why is it green? Do I look, <laughs> do I look fucking Irish or something? Which is absolutely brilliant. And then, yeah, he goes in for the absolute one punch killer. I mean, he, he, he does take his coat off first, though. He's, a, he's, he a, he's clearly he's a civil man. Respected yeah, gangster, he roll, man. Yeah, rolls, rolls his sleeves. <laughs> and he's like, Come on, I'm, I'm... It's the best punch you've ever seen for a cake. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So, uh... but, then, but then after that, just quickly, when he walks off and says, Make me a new cake and goes away, the guy's picking off the floor and trying to stack it back up. I mean, they're a little well, bit sad that they've spent all this time doing it. I'd be sad to that too. They look so happy with that cake. He's like, oh, it's green. Like, he's like, it was a weird shade of green, though. I think it was, and um, I think I think a, I think that's part of like just them hating yeah. the Irish people. There's a reference to that in the book that okay, they hate. They okay, hate an okay. Irish, a, fellow, a, rel- a, rel- a, a rival Irish gang. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just a little nod to the, little one of those little Easter eggs. Of the book that is, I think. Go on then. What was uh, What was your favourite scene, Steve? For me, my favourite scene was just Roxy. Just, just Roxy, Roxy in Roxy general. I think it character. was Roxy when she first gets to the party and she's like, she walks in, <coughs> she's like, where's table 20? And they're like at the back and she's like, oh, fuck it. Excuse me, excuse me. She's giving her brothers the yeah. finger and everything. Man, Roxy's character 
he's the, he's the best character. Like, yeah. hands, hands down. Down. I love it. I like when she gets, when she, uh, obviously her mother's killed and she's, she's clearly, you know, yeah. she's clearly gunning for him. She's such a, such a strong character. That was look, a traumatic look, scene. Look, that was. It was, it was, it was, it was horrible. And it, it's horrible in the book as well. But like the, the Siler of the Heroes World today, Again, the best character. The best character. Oh, Siler was the best character by oh, far. I'm just putting the connections you, together. You think she's the Siler well, then? Well, I do, I do. Okay then, well. She's the badass. On that then. Go then. What do you think is going to happen going forward? Obviously I know, so I can't ask me the predictions, so I'll just tell you the story. So, what do you, so where do you think it's going to go from here? Oh, this is an interesting one. So I think that this, because obviously they, they alluded to like a, they almost showed like a preview at the end, didn't they? Of what's coming up. Yeah. So they, they alluded that uh, Ali was going to save a bird and stuff like this so she is almost i think in my head being seen as the the new jesus in a sense oh okay you know, that's, in, jesus, that's yeah. interesting yeah uh the female jesus should i say uh and on the other hand of it you've got roxy who is all, all already resentful of a family and her parents and stuff that she's then loving this new power she's now in control she ain't taking shit from no man so then obviously you got the yin and the yang, and I reckon they're going to collide. Oh, okay, so, to be honest, Roxy That's doesn't dislike thinking. her family as much in the book. I think it's been played up a little okay, more okay, here. Okay. Like she, lo- she likes Daryl in the book, which was the guy's wedding. Yeah. But yeah, okay, fair enough. What, what about the other characters? What do you think's happened with Margot? Uh, I think Margot and Tunde, I think they're the. I think they will meet eventually. I oh, think okay, they're gonna, then. They're, their stories are going to be entwined. They're going to connect. Or... Are, they, are, they, are they the only characters you think are going to meet? Or... No, no. I think I think there's there's going to be several that are going to meet, but we've only been introduced to a handful <laughs> in episode one. Uh, but yeah, but but I'm I'm most intrigued about uh, Margot and how she fits into all of this because she's like completely away from yeah. all the rest. Because yeah. you mentioned at the start that people have the powers when they're younger. Oh yes, yes. So, so Margot, obviously, I'm sure I'm sure I remember the trailer. She's got powers. Uh, well, she hasn't got. Like she that. hasn't got powers. She's been tested. If she has powers, yeah. that's, that's what the trailer is showing you. Okay. I, well, like I say, I, I, I'm just intrigued so, on where her story's heading and how, and if Rox is going to fucking fry her brains up. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Fair enough. So, obviously, not a future prediction for me, but just ending up. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to how they're going to go because, like I said, certain things have started yeah. to change. You know, Tunde's character's been changed a little bit. Rox's character's yeah. been changed a bit. I'm actually really excited to see where they're going. I'm, I'm excited to see. They've expanded it a little bit of the story as compared to the books. I wonder if we're going to get it all finished in one season or if we're going to get it finished further on. Because at the very start of the episode, mm. it says six months ago. Now in the book, the whole book's set over a 10-year period. Okay. So I don't know if they're going to only do so many chapters of the book for season one and we're going to get yeah. pushed forward. But I'm actually really looking forward to seeing where they're going with it. Because I, I think it's, it's going to be... It's a comparison for you for the book, yeah. It, yeah, it is. And that's it. I think that, that's the key out there. And I think... Um, you know, that's good. But uh, let us know if you're a you're a crazy radical feminist and whether you would love this world that's about to happen. And we'll uh, catch you next week for something new.